Hello, and welcome to Champions of Psychology, a show with the goal of openly talking about mental health and gaming. I'm your host, Trevor Bettis, and with me each week are two people who know way more about this than I ever will. Mitch Jordan is a registered clinical co counselor with a counseling and psychotherapy practice in Vancouver, BC. It's going to take me a little bit to be able to get this <laughs> intro down pat. I apologize now for my flubs. Um, Rafael Bacamazzo, aka Dr. B, is the clinical director for Take This and Dam uh, Dabney on clinical role. They'll be talking about mental health in these unprecedented times, as well as how gaming affects us. If you're here with us live in the chat, you can leave a question that I might ask them later in the show, but before we get to that, a quick disclaimer. Champion Psychology is meant as education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for medical advice uh, or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and self-disclosures of the hosts. Uh, while we can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions uh, for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and license uh, and links uh, at our at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resources. We assume no liability uh, for the use of the information or resources on the these sites, and we encourage you to use your best judgment. Um, so, uh, today's topic is going to be, um, uh, pandemic fatigue. And for that, I pass it over to Mitra and Dr. B. Ouch. Yeah, no, I, I am, I am seeing that now. <laughs> the podcast listeners are uh, gonna hear us. <laughs> yeah, we're we're gonna do this now through uh, 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 hand puppets. Um, let me see if <laughs> I can figure out what's going on here. Um. And they, they're saying it's probably Zoom, but I don't know how since I can hear both of you. Um, oh, hey. Um, maybe it's because there's no volume there. <laughs> um, cool. Hey, so th uh, this is, you know, live panic. Uh, <laughs> let's see what I can do with this because I'm... Yeah, no, it's it's totally not that anyone at all is watching uh, at all. Um actually, let's see. Nope, you're not doing that. Okay. <laughs> um yeah, yeah, just give them a give them a little song and a dance there. Uh <laughs> I will be sure to edit this part out of the podcast. <laughs> um you know what? I got a quick fix for this that um, I will. <laughs> yes, yes. Use the finger puppets. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to go to, we're going to have this. <laughs> Um, <laughs> y'all are missing, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, y'all are missing some good stuff, stuff here. here. Okay. okay. Yes. yes. G give, give me give one me second. One second. Okay. okay. Might as well just see if I can kind of link it up so I can see it. 
Okay. Go ahead and sort that out. Oh, here we go. Why am I hearing, hearing stuff now? Stuff. Again, Again, this, this is, is live. live. <laughs> Technical <laughs> assistance. <laughs> Technical <laughs> assistance is needed. <laughs> okay. Um. Apparently, Mitra is a little whisper right now. Ooh. Oh, good. You mean I can actually be heard? That's that's handy. Only softly. Only softly. You can be heard? Can I be heard? Am I hearable? Uh, I don't know. I, don't know. I, think, I think I just... I just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, feedback. feedback yeah, yeah, I, I, saw I saw that. that. Um... Um... Alright, how can I see the chat? full screen oh there we go can hear both barely i am so sorry can almost hear mitra i'll yell <laughs> <laughs> i'll project my voice i'm pretty sure that there's a way around this that doesn't require me to shout <laughs> um okay so i think i've got that there mitra seems good now dr b try talking oh, a little bit uh, how am I coming back? Yeah, good. I'm coming through. I think feedback's only for Trevor. Okay. <laughs> okay, it should it, it should be better now because I muted one source and oh, added good. the new Glad one. Glad you can hear us. Uh, okay, right. Doctor B is good. We don't Lovely. have two Trevors. All right. Apologies about that for the podcast show. You didn't hear anything. This is fine. This is great. This is going. This is a fantastic show. <laughs> <laughs> um I guess so apologies about that. Uh <laughs> Dr. B, why don't you uh, uh start start back where you were? <laughs> I'm not sure I can beat what you all missed. I mean, there was there was a therapy session between me and Strahd. Um, there was with there was uh, a medley of Roberta Flack hits. No, I we didn't do that. But, um <laughs> But anyway, hi, I'm Dr. B. I'm the clinical director of TakeThis.org, the first mental health nonprofit that serves the game community. And uh, I'm very excited to be here with Mitra Jordan and Trevor. Mitra, tell us about yourself. Mitra, before right. you do that, Dylan, uh, Dylan, the text document asked if you can move the mic a little bit closer to yourself. Yeah. I knew there was going to be something. <laughs> so apparently what I am is not as technologically capable as my two lovely counterparts here. But, uh, you know, we do what we must. I'm in a technological panic. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. How may I help ground you? Are your feet on the ground? Um, I, really need, I really need the Strahd finger puppet if we're going to do that. Uh <laughs> He can be part of the session. Yeah, there we no. go. <laughs> uh, so I'm a therapist working in Victoria, BC. Um, I love my work and I also happen to love games. I often, when I'm working with clients, get questions about mental health games, screen time regarding both themselves, their kids, their families, all of that. Um, and we often come up with, <laughs> across all these misconceptions that people have about games and screen time and damage and lack of social connection. Um, and so that's, you know, that's kind of my perspective is that games are awesome for social connection and mental health. Um, and I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I think that's about it for now. Sure <laughs> okay. we'll, be ask, we'll be answering questions later. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, Strahd oh, yes. will help. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're talking about the pandemic because... Yeah. Everybody's talking about the pandemic because it's all around us because it's a pandemic. And it's exhausting. It is we've we've been dealing with this now in uh most of us in North America for over nine months. Most of us are doing our part. Most of us are trying to stop the spread as best we can. And it's exhausting. It is so, so exhausting. Mitra, what are you seeing in your practice? Oh, well, it's kind of like people are experiencing this ongoing Groundhog Day situation because so many of my clients, first of all, I'm not able to see clients in person. I'm choosing to work online, which I think is really tough for people. Um, we've managed to make it work. I actually have a lot of new clients that I haven't ever met in person. Um, so it is working, but what I hear a lot of is this kind of disconnect between how I'm used to operating in the world and how I've now had to learn to operate in the world with masks and with distance and with never seeing your friends and with um, 
it's just that we get a lot of the drudgery of daily experience without those small enlivening moments of feeling connected to others. So yeah, the isolation, I think, is such a big part of the exhaustion for people. So, and I think there's this disconnect between you're having a good day and maybe it's, you know, looking out the window and it's feeling nice. And then you're like, oh my God, there's a pandemic. And there's these moments where it just kind of lands. Ah, there's a pandemic. So I think there's still also a lot of processing of what this means. Yeah. Well, we, we talked about this in the, mm -hmm. in the lead up to the show about essentially the complete upheaval of what's normal. Yeah. Like we all had our routines, you know, if, if I wanted to, I would have loved to have gone to, I would have loved to have met Trevor in person. I would have loved to meet you in person before this show, but we just don't have that opportunity anymore. Our social structure, our routines, everything is disrupted. And we're, we're I'm seeing stuff in the chat about wibbly wobbly, timey wimey. Uh, yes. What is time anymore? Also, I just got to point out bow ties are cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for audio listeners, he's wearing a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> I will have a different one every show. Yes. Um, That's a promise. <laughs> yeah, I've got enough of them, I think. But um, what do we do? Like, what are we doing now that our routines have been so universally disrupted? Normal's not normal anymore. Yeah. Now, uh, what like the thing that that Mitra uh, Mitra was saying about like you're just going about your day, and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, there's a pandemic. It's like I'm having a good day. I'm doing stuff. Oh, maybe I'll go to the bookstore. Mm. Mm -hmm. No, no, I won't. <laughs> it's that it's that little rem remembrance. Yeah, I think that's such a big piece of it too. It's that those things that would normally have been really great in our lives to do just on a daily basis, those little resources. Oh, I'll take a few minutes and I'll go to the bookstore. I'll stop off in a cafe and I'll sit down and, you know, maybe so-and-so will drop by, you know, and there, there, it's these little kind of markers of both our day and our week that would really make our week. And we don't, you know, we think of the big things, that vacation, which we're also not going on, yeah. but, um, but you know, it's kind of like these little things that bookend moments during the day that are really sustaining and are resources that we rely on that we don't have at the moment in the same way at all. So, so how are you developing a new routine for yourself? Like, I, I mean, I know what I'm doing, and and for me, as such a huge introvert to begin with, um, a lot of things haven't necessarily changed for me. I and mean, obviously I can't go to my coffee shop. I can't go there to read or whatever, but how are you establishing new routines? Well, <laughs> Trevor, would you like to go? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> thought, or do you want me? <laughs> um, I have lots of thoughts. Um, yeah. Um, it's, it's really, it's, it's weird to, for me because you know, I, this is a pandemic. It is a terrible time. This is one of the worst things that any of us in our lifetime have seen globally. Yeah. And it's weird because before this, I, w I had a retail job that I was working, just coming off, getting laid off an office job. And mm -hmm. I was doing those, you know, okay, I'm going to work. I'm doing all this stuff and everything. And then when the pandemic hit, I have like a really big, like hypochondria and germophobia thing that got kicked mm. to skyrocketing levels at the beginning of this. I mean, I was petrified to even put my hand on a doorknob or anything like that. And uh, I'll, okay, let's be honest. I still am. Uh, <laughs> and, but now like I have this, you know, they were like, I wake up at seven, I play with my new cat and make sure that it's not going to climb up the curtains. And then I get to work editing podcasts, doing streams uh, with amazing people like you and everything like that. So my day to day is now completely different than what it was before. And I, and I enjoy it more, which f I then feel guilty about because the only reason I got to this point was because a pandemic hit. Ah, uh. So, okay. yeah, so, so like my, my, my day to day has a hundred percent changed in almost every way, except for playing destiny at night with friends. Um, but besides that, it's, you know, it, besides that, like my day to day is so different because I am locked in my house. I am doing everything at my desk and like, I'm paranoid about anything coming into this house. So like there is massive changes mm -hmm. in my life doesn't look almost anything like it did before, but it's also good somehow. 
it's mm. confusing. I think, okay, so I think you've drawn attention to a few things that are really good to break down and discuss. And the first of all, I think, is the kind of chaos and fear that comes out of the experience of suddenly being in this situation and also not having your usual resources to rely upon. And then over time, you've done a few things that I think are really sustaining. And so you've got um, a new cat. Um, <laughs> yeah. but having creatures in one's life, um, and I'm going to out myself, crazy cat lady. So I've, <laughs> I've got four of them, but we're a family of five. So I'm yeah. just going to say, if you're not outnumbered by your cats, no, I think any <laughs> amount of animals that you find a support in your life is a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. But yeah, so having a new pet, that's wonderful. And that also changes up our perception of our home environment and therefore of our home routines. Yeah. Um, and then you were able to craft a, a new career or a, Pretty much, a intensifying yeah. the career yeah. that you, yeah, which I think is absolutely wonderful. And I think that, that that's where people often go is this sense of, um, I'm somehow profiting from the misfortune of this situation. And that's the feeling of guilt. And I just want to say, I hope for everyone listening and watching this, that no, that's not it. You've come around and you've been able to make the best of what's been really, really hard. And I think that's admirable and wonderful and a testament to your resilience, you know, and potentially also to the supports around you. Because Trevor, you talked about how one thing that hasn't changed is playing Destiny, was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with your friends in the evening. And that's kind of been a constant. Yeah. And so we do rely on these constants in our life to help with developing our routines and so that's a big piece of it and then that um willingness to just acknowledge your own fears around the pandemic and then also some of the things that you can do to make your home life more wonderful and comfortable and interesting and meaningful to you and, and really um i think that's that's a really great way of dealing with it actually I appreciate so. hearing that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that one of the things that, you know, as my friends and I have talked about this um, over and over and over again, and both my mental health colleagues as, and friends and my, you know, my friends outside of mental health routine is the is one of the things that keeps coming up more and more and more and mm -hmm. maybe not coincidentally online gamers are some of the only people I've heard say, largely, my routines aren't disrupted. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I get that. I've still got my friends. I've still got the raid on, th on you know, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, I, I, you know, during this time is when I started having semi-routine uh, Friday night. If, if anybody's ever played Earth Defense Force 5. Oh, my gosh. Right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> It's, I mean, it's so, so campy and so wonderful mm. and so cartoonish, but yeah. so wonderfully cathartic as well to the wave after wave of alien invasion. Um, but yeah, I, games have been amazing for that. I have played more yeah. idle champions than I have ever played. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag totally a sponsor. So <laughs> Totally great game. <laughs> see, see, I feel like my old champions uh, uh, playing went down after I lost my office job where I could easily hide my phone underneath something. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, uh, but what you're saying about like how the, there's the, the the patterns are the same because like my friends and I only want two two of my friends that I play with regularly live here in San Diego. Mm. Uh, and the rest of them are off in different areas, and so. The fact that we still get to play this game semi-regularly and whatnot, it is still normalcy because that was happening before the pandemic. I was used to not yeah. seeing St. James and Alex because they don't live here. And so I'm already used to that fact in this. And so it's just playing a game at night is just kind of, it, it is a bit of normalcy that was there before. But I do find that, I mean, I know I did. I don't know about any of the rest of my group. I'm not going to speak for them. But like when Destiny would have like a lull in content, we're like, oh, we kind of ran out of things to do. I was desperately like, uh, what, what about GTA? What about Monster Hunter? What else can we play? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Among Us got really popular. Yes. Yeah, we did um, Among Us. Yep. Yeah. 
Yeah, and Jackbox games, you know, all these kinds of things. And um, I actually played quite a bit of Animal Crossing. Oh my gosh, yes. Um, yeah, so my pandemic situation was that I had two kids who had just run, returned from Japan and had to quarantine. Um, my husband and eldest oh. son move out of the house so that the quarantineagers and I can kind of be at home. Um, and this was before things really kind of closed down because it was like early March. Well, it was March 16th when all Canadians were sort of ordered home and you kind of had this situation of I was suddenly in a quarantine, you know, and then you kept thinking, as I'm sure everyone has experienced it, oh, things will go back to normal. And so things were normal when I went into quarantine. And of course, they really weren't once the quarantine was done. Um, and I think that set the stage for another piece that's been tough around the pandemic is the sense of this roller coaster. You know, things will be back to normal, then they won't, and then the summer, and then numbers rising, and all that kind of stuff that keeps us recognizing that in a very real way, we can't control our lives the way we did before, that we're on this ride. And I think that really plays into mental health challenges that people experience and the fatigue. So, well, the, uh, I know the Washington State Department of Health uh, a couple months ago released a really interesting report that used the long term psychology of disaster trauma mm. to talk about. And I was I was looking for it before before we started the show. And unfortunately, I couldn't find it. So I'm not going to be able to quote from it directly. But um, it, it essentially, it said the same thing that Mitra just said that throughout the course of long-term natural disasters, we go through this like heroic phase, this honeymoon phase, and then things kind of start to sink in the reality and this sort of dysphoria that yeah. comes with learning to establish new routines and a new normal in an ever-changing, you know, scenario. Yeah. And it, it's hearing people wistfully talk about when things get back to normal. Yeah. It, it's, I don't know. It, it, it's a kind of a bittersweet thing to me because I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I'm no, that, that I feel like that is setting into the house that I'm living in because um, my wife and I live with my mom uh, because the, the economics are the way they are. Um, and uh, just yesterday she was saying, I was like, Oh, well, we should probably change up how we're doing this because the stopgap that we had at the beginning of this isn't working anymore and it's looking like we're going to need something permanent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's definitely setting in where it's just like, oh, we'll just do it this way for a little bit. That's not how it is anymore. It's like, no, this is pro we probably need to figure out a better way to do this overall. Yeah, this isn't just a temp I mean, this isn't just a temporary 3-week thing. This mm -hmm. is a long-term thing we're going to have to live with and alter the way even the way we socially interact yeah i mean i i don't know about you all i i had a like 15 feet apart outdoor in a park fully masked meeting with a couple of people i knew and it was so awkward yeah. i didn't know what to do mm -hmm. like social i mean i i'm open about my autism to begin with so social cues are kind of weird to me anyway but uh, even i was so anxious in yeah. that situation, not knowing what's the expected protocol here. Yeah. I, I went to, um, my cousin got married during this pandemic and it, he was like, listen, it's just going to be me, uh, my future wife, the officiant, and I need you and your wife there to be the, the witnesses. And I was like, cool, great. We'll go to a park. And it was one of the strangest things. Cause I was so happy. I'm there seeing my cousin getting married, uh, to, to this, uh, the, this perfect woman for him. And they've been great together. And I couldn't just go give them a hug afterwards. It was so weird. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a really tough one. So my middle child graduated this year and, and, uh, he, um, was at a smallish private school, um, and of course, we couldn't attend the grad yep. ceremony. And I have such great memories of my eldest's grad ceremony. And I was devastated at first that I can't even be there. Um, and I can't, you know, 
just host these kids afterwards mm -hmm. in the same way and just have a really great time with them and just kind of but you know what a really great thing came out of it so his school handled um they kind of did this youtube stream thing and they just made it really beautiful and it meant that my family across the world could actually participate in the ceremony at the oh, same time as wow. me. And we were texting each other back and forth and we were talking about how moving the speeches were and it ended up being quite beautiful. That's awesome. So, yeah. Also, shout, is, I was going to say, also shout out to the uh, high school in Japan that held a graduation through Minecraft. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, if yeah. I remember correctly, there was one that uh, had a graduation through Minecraft and another one that um, I, there was something to do with Animal Crossing, but I'm like, I don't think you can have that many people in there. <laughs> Only eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Only eight students at a time can walk. Um, <laughs> But no, that, that's absolutely beautiful because that's something that I hadn't thought about before is the fact that, yeah, because they're live streaming it, anyone of the family can be there. Hmm. And yeah, the, you know, so I think that's been that's been an interesting thing. And Mitra, correct me if I'm if I'm incorrectly stereotyping mental health professionals, but largely mental health professionals, at least in my experience, tend to be kind of Luddites when it comes to technology. <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on the age of the mental health professionals. <laughs> that's probably, that's what, well, it, yeah, that's probably and the true. Interest, um, the interest as well, yeah, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. I, one of the things that I've been really happy to see come out of this has been uh, seeing a lot of mental health professionals dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century and the ability to do telehealth has increased to an exponential degree. Yeah, and which really increases the accessibility of mental health professionals, which is reflected in a lot of their caseloads. <laughs> that that's true. Um, I am really grateful for that. Um, my the one challenge I think that I see with clients on that front is helping them figure out how to create a safe um, space, if you will, at home to feel comfortable doing therapy. You know, because for some people they don't want to be overheard, and of course. People are rarely able to be home alone now. Mm -hmm. So um, so depending on who I'm working with, it might be more or less difficult for them to find a way to have um, a safe and confidential home environment. Whereas before, they'd just come into my office and there it was. And it was easier, I think, for them to leave their... Um, if there's challenges or trauma or really difficult things coming up in the session, there is something really great about being able to leave and shut the door behind you. And it kind of can feel like it, it allows the contents of the session to stay in that room, which sometimes is the absolute best thing, depending on what's coming up. And now that is harder and we have to talk about how they can do that at home and how they can create a space to explore what happened in the session and then move away from it yeah so i i know one of the things that i've heard the most especially with a lot of work from home is the separation of your workspace and your mm -hmm. living space and that is not something everybody has the luxury of being able to do mm -hmm. um and you know. for some people who are going to therapy you know via you know zoom calls and stuff like that you, what you're saying there with like they're able to close the door and walk away from it now that's their living room like they can't yeah. just walk away from the conversation that they just had through a, a zoom call because it's still there they're still they're on their couch they're going to remember later that oh yeah i talked about that here yes and yeah. so finding a way to separate that becomes really important mm -hmm. um and i just i really feel for some of my clients some of them are calling me from their cars you know, that's the only private space they have right then. I think that's a great idea, honestly. Like, I, I, mean, I yeah, it works, but it's, but it's just, you know, it's, it's different. <laughs> it's, it's different. And I, I want for them to be able to be comfortable, but whatever is working for them in terms of their comfort is the most important thing. So, well, that's something, I mean, now that we don't have conventions to go to, which has been weird because I, you know, it, I, I was often traveling every other week mm -hmm. for conventions for my work with Take This. 
And now I haven't left Seattle since last February, which mm. is the longest time I've stayed put in half a decade. And we've shifted heavily in our, with our work at Take This to offering a lot more trainings and especially in the workplace. And one of the things that has come up repeatedly is exactly what you both are talking about. And that's establishing uh, cues for separate spaces when it's not a separate space. Like one of yeah. the advantages of having an external office is you go there and if you've got coworkers, you're getting cues from them that it's time to work. It's time to behave a certain way. It's time to focus a certain way. Um, a lot of folks who are new at working from home, they don't have those, those things established. So I'm really curious, what are you both doing to, <laughs> to, to do that? I've been working from home for years, so I've, <laughs> I've got my routines down. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll share my setup. So um, I have been, I am in the very fortunate position of having a door I can shut and a space in which I can do my work, which otherwise I'm not sure what I'd do. But um, but so I have a back room that was at times kind of a creative space. And, you know, uh, so I move things around and I've created a workspace there. And uh, I also use a white noise machine, which I typically actually use at my office too. Um, and for me, that sort of physiologically almost puts me in the space where I'm working. So I turn on the white noise machine, which sits just outside the door. I shut the door and then I am in work mode. You know, I have my client files in front of me and that's kind of how I can do it in terms of creating that separation. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. uh, um, before I uh, describe mine, uh, I'm actually going to, we're actually going to take a quick break uh, to remind viewers and listeners of our disclaimer. And I, before I get into it real quick, just for viewers and listeners, we're using this disclaimer so much just to, you know, convey like, hey, th we're here to have a conversation and have some form of education about mental health, but we cannot help you in any sort of way like that. And we're trying to stress that. And the reason why I'm doing a mid one is because not all viewers were here at the beginning of it. So Without any further ado, here's the disclaimer. Champions of Psychology is meant as an education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for medical advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics will be primarily rooted in research and the personal experiences and, and self-disclosures of the hosts. While we uh, can provide generalized education and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources and links at our sole discretion, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resources. Uh, we assume no liability for the use of the information or resources on these sites, and we encourage you to use your best judgment. One of these days, I'm just going to be able to do that without any prompt. <laughs> <laughs> let's, um, actually, let's build this into like a stream deck or something, and we, we get a contest for who can say it the fastest and oh. the clearest. And then you can just be like, beep, boop, beep. Dude, I have a stream deck too. I could a hundred percent do that. Yes. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, the, the the first episode of Champion Psychology Comp Competition. Who can read the disclaimer the fastest? Um, Definitely. We should we should get uh, uh what, what's that? His his name's like a uh, Red Pepper. That's his actual name. The uh, guy over in UK that does like movie trailer uh, narration and disclaimer uh, reading. You get him to do it. Um, but anywho. Oh, now I'm just I'm gonna warm up my vocal. Red leather, yellow leather, red. Leather. I know New York. I need New York. I know I need unique New York. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I get way too tongue tied doing that. Um, so what I did with this, because again, like this whole rigmarole uh, started during the pandemic, uh, this desk used to be against this wall and the webcam viewed everything. I don't want y'all to see that way, which is just a mess. <laughs> um, and so this was very much like, like, okay, I need a work environment where I can, you know, have a webcam and it shows me in this semi professional <laughs> streamer I'm setup. I'm professional now. Yeah. I've hidden my shame. Yeah, no, uh, like, uh, okay, okay. Here, here's a little peek behind the screen. There's all of my toys and magic cards, everyone. This, so oh, we just, it. we just tilt that down a little bit back there. There we go. Um, oh, and like God. right here, right now. I'm reaching into my living room because I'm in my den. <laughs> so like, 
it, it this is very much like it is literally a corner of my den that i set up to be my workspace and yeah. when i'm here looking at my screen and editing like i'm just seeing this area and whatnot and i'm very focused on what i'm doing and it is a separation of where i normally am um but it, you know it's also where i sit here and play pc games and stream on twitch on fridays yeah. and stuff like that so um yeah it, it's doing doing having a separate space is nice but obviously like i had to kind of cram it in here and yeah and as far as the the the, the work cues i'm gonna be honest because i i'm i'm an introvert also i like my my work cues was literally me getting to my cubicle turning away from everyone going i don't want to see any of you till i'm done <laughs> <laughs> Like I'd have headphones in, like one of my coworkers have to pop up over the cubicle to be like, attention, look at me. Yeah. <laughs> Nerf gun at the ready. Pop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I like for me, it's very much down to me being like, okay, I'm going to work right now. I need to get work done. I'm just gonna focus in on, on doing it. So I I luckily didn't have that kind of transitional thing of that work use, but I know I've heard plenty of stories of people who did like uh, a lot of the people that work at IGN were very um, transparent on Twitter and stuff like that about how the transition from going to the office in the studio every day to working from their homes was like Brian Altano was talking about like, I, he's like, I'm here right now on stream and everything looks goofy and we're having a fun time. My daughter is right there playing with a toy and my yeah. wife is making lunch in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, it's been an interesting time. I think that is really hard. Like when I was at work, I would be in work mode for that day. I'd be in my office, you know, now um, between sessions, I might throw laundry in or something, you know, and I actually have learned not to do that. You know, it's to the point where I sort of front loaded, you know, the three days a week that I am cramming, you know, a lot of sessions into mainly because that way I can kind of stay in that flow because otherwise it's really difficult. And then you mm -hmm. get the cat yowling at the door, you know. I love your cat. <laughs> I love my cats, but oh my God, with, you know, a bird <laughs> in his mouth or something. And oh I actually gosh. had that happen. I had that happen where, you know, I sort of was just about to start a session and uh, and I had to actually ask for a minute to sort of deal with this situation with the cat and the bird. And I'm just saying, you don't really want to be there as a therapist. So, the, yeah. There, there, there's a reason why during these streams, my wife is in our bedroom with the cat, because otherwise she'd be up that curtain right now. <laughs> and I'd be like, yep, talk about mental health, having a good day. Please don't fall. Please don't fall. Please don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of these days, I'm actually there's a perverse part of me that's waiting for Trevor to hop off, hop off uh, screen, and just kind of hear a muffled. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what my D and D group gets. It, yeah. Is all of a sudden it's just like <laughs> crap. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one of the, you know, one of the things that I, I've, I've heard, I've heard a lot of things from a lot of different people at different studios um, about tips that they've been doing for newly working at home. And some of the really cool ones I've heard, um, I'm going to, I'm going to give a shout out to my significant other, uh, the, the creator, how to ADHD one of uh, on YouTube, one of the things she does is she walks the dog before around like before and after work. And that's her commute. Oh yeah, no, I've heard yeah. like stuff like that. It's it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, um, I there have been times where I've gone to the garage and sat in my car and listened to the radio for like fifteen minutes, and just the drive time. This is the drive time hour. I we know you're not driving air anywhere, but you know what? We're doing it anyway, and that's just kind of for me to transition from home and work. Mm -hmm. um, both of those things have been tremendously helpful. And another thing I've heard from people is different keyboards. Because especially if you're oh. working at the same, like right now, work hours, it's my boring keyboard. <laughs> it's, the Corsair K95 is not in this room right now. That's actually, I kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. And work, like um, work clothes have been just mentioned in the chat. And yeah, I, I will get dressed up for work. Oh, dude. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the weirdest thing. I've been wearing shoes lately <laughs> around my house because I, because I like, I would, for the whole pandemic, I was walking around with no shoes. I was just like, what are shoes? Get out of here. And like recently, I just started putting on my shoes in the morning and walking around the house because I, 
feel more productive? I don't know what it is, but when I have my shoes, I'm like, oh, it's time to move. It's time to do stuff. It, it, I, I don't I don't know. <laughs> no, but I think that's that's wonderful. I mean, you got to somehow embody your sense of being in your work self. And mm -hmm. it's with that sort of no separation that happens with being at home. It's like you have to just kind of be more conscious about it. So I, I have the chair I sit on when I'm working and my my back room is also my creative space. So it's where I I might sew or look at recipe books or draw or do other things. And I at first found that super difficult. It was really hard to switch. Not that work isn't creative, but it was hard to switch between therapist self who's at work to Mitra, who's at home and, and doing stuff and, you know, goofing around and having fun. And those things are those things are really separate. What's with the face, doctor? Were you using the therapist voice at home? <laughs> oh my God, my kids, <laughs> my kids are teenagers. This is like an, an young, and a young adult. So we've got like, you know, 21, 18 and almost 16. And yeah, I, I think, you know, they'll throw in a random, how does that make you feel? And I'm like, I don't even say that at work. Like, oh, I never say that. Like most of them, anyway, so. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That, uh, but, you know, one of the things that I, I keep thinking about in terms of this stuff is that one of the biggest things we lost in this pandemic is our sense of predictability. Yeah. Like we, we've, we've talked about routines so far and we've talked about establishing routines and the loss of routines. But one of the biggest things that it seems like the routines do for all of us is give us a forward sense of things, like something mm -hmm. to look forward to in the future. And with, with that disrupted, so goes hope. And that is the scariest thing of all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are you all doing to like, one of my absolute favorite psychology books um, back at the prison I used to work with uh, work at, I, I had a stack of like seven of them for the guys to borrow whenever. And mm -hmm. every psych student knows this book. It's Victor Frankl's Man, uh, Man's Search for Meaning. Mm -hmm. And there's a line in that that is so quoted for good reason that uh, a person who has a why can endure almost any how. Mm. What's, what's your why? Why, why you, why are you pulling for getting through this? Oof. <laughs> I know we got, I, I took it. That, I took that, it that, that was a deep one. Me, Mitra, Mitra yeah. why, why don't you go first on sure. this? <laughs> there is something about, um, seeing oneself as a survivor, right? Um, and part of that depends on being able to draw on your previous experiences of surviving things, getting through tough things. Um, this is a tough thing that none of us have encountered before. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what adds to the challenge in terms of hope, right? So in terms of the why, it's like this desire to figure out how to cope with the unknown. And also for me, the desire to help guide others through it, my loved ones, my kids, um, my clients whom I care deeply about um, the world, like I want to be the, a support in that situation. And that's a huge why for me It's like, how do I want to be in the world? You know, is my kind of so that's a that's a piece of it. Um, and one thing that helps me sustain that is just really taking it one step at a time. There are a lot of people, particularly clients and, you know, humans in this world, and perhaps all of us as well, you know, if you've gone through some form of traumatic experience or the other, you've had that sense of predictability shaken up in the past. And you have learned that taking things one step at a time and being able to just really slow it down to being grounded in this present moment is a way to get through for many people who've experienced trauma, you're also in survival mode. And this is one of the toughest things. It's kind of like, there's always a part of one that remains vigilant, kind of scanning to cope with challenges in, you know, the environment that might be real, might just be perceived based on your history. Um, 
this is another form of being in survival mode. And when those pile up, like I already, I already am kind of in a rough space, you know, and now this, you know, again, being able to stay grounded and take things slower, just slow it down for yourself if you can. Just difficult if you have a family. You may have an easier why I have people to take care of. You know, I have a dog to walk. You know, I've got those kinds of things can really help us be in the present moment, but they also add to what we're struggling with. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, like I was I, I, I was thinking about it for a moment, uh, but I, I then was I, I'll be honest, I stopped thinking because I was listening to Mitra. Um, no, that, was, but, I, that was in rap. Yeah, I know. It really was. <laughs> it really absolutely was. Um, usually I'm pretty good at listening and thinking at the same time. I was just straight listening to you. Um, it, You're in your present moment. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my. Oh, my God. Learning about that. But I'll, I'll, we're going to get more into this next week with, with talking about uh, uh, therapists and whatnot. But like literally somebody being like you need to be more present in the moment i was just like what do you mean <laughs> and they're like what do you mean what do you mean <laughs> and i realized i'm like i was so future thinking all the time i was never in the present but um but i think my why has changed over the pandemic because it started off just as simply i don't want to go i don't want to have to wear a mask and gloves every time i go somewhere and be and look at every single person like they have it like I just I want to I want to be able to get a package and not worry about uh, having any kind of contamination on it because I'm so freaked out about everything. Like it, it started off as just that, but I mean it's evolved to like I I want to be able to like go out with my wife and do stuff. Like that's why I'm getting through this is so my wife and I can just just go to islands. I don't, like, I'm not even asking for a big trip. I just want to go to islands on a Wednesday and get some fries and stuff. It's just as simple as that. Like, I, obviously I want to do the bigger stuff too. I want to, I want to go to the bar with my friends on Thursdays. Like it, it's, it's the why has be, uh, it's gone from me missing things to becoming the why of why I'm going through this is because I, I'm going to get back to there no matter what. Um, I'm, I may, you know, be still be wearing a mask and still be paranoid for a little bit. Close talkers are going to get straight shoved away from me. Um, but, uh, but also like now, like I have, we're, we're I'm doing these streams and stuff like, I, I want to go to a con. I want to meet B Dave and Aaron. I want to like meet y'all. Like I want to yeah. go get a beer with you or something. Like I just want to have a social interaction that is separated from this window. And that is what is pushing me to get through it. Yeah, it well, um, maybe not coincidentally, it, it, those seemingly mundane, uh, mundane images were also a part of the book I taught I talked about, although his was less mundane. Um, <laughs> he well, the, so I, I, I islands is pretty gonna mundane. get a, gonna get a little serious. Mm -hmm. um, Victor Frankl's story is not a happy one. Uh, for those of you who don't know his history, he was a Viennese psychiatrist who survived the Holocaust. And he came up with this modality of therapy that he called logotherapy, uh, finding meaning in things while he was surviving the Holocaust. And uh, he told a story about falling down in the snow on one of their marches, uh, being marched to a different camp and knowing that he would be killed if he could not get up. And when he fell, he had this vision of himself giving a speech in a room, surviving this all and getting uproarious applause. And that, that just, that image is what got him through. The mm. why doesn't have to be grandiose. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I want to be able to give my mom a hug. Yeah. My mm. immunocompromised mom, a hug. That's all I want right now. And that's why I'm going to, I'm going to do my part to get through this. Yeah. As hard as it is. 100%. Yeah. But we got real serious with that. Didn't we? Oh no. And uh, that's good. I mean, that's that, important. Yeah. Yeah. It is those things like, you know, they don't have to be grandiose. They just need to be real and close to our hearts. Mm -hmm. That's what gets you through. Yeah. Um, yeah. uh,
the, 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 I mean, I, I talked about this uh, on the other show recently, but like I found out that I have a bunch of half siblings recently and I've still only gotten to meet some of them in person. And most of them, like we were planning on having a big, like at the beginning of the year, we we're like, we're gonna have a big get together in December and we're all going to like finally meet for the first time and get everybody there. And that couldn't happen. I mean, we, uh, day after Christmas, we had a giant zoom meeting with all of everybody there. And it was like, man, it would be really cool if like, we could actually be there. It, it, it's it, it's not great. No. Yeah. It, God, conventions. Yeah, no. I also <laughs> want to get back to conventions. I want to go to a PAX again. Dude, uh, and I haven't been to a convention in gone. years. I like I, I went to Comic Con from two thousand to twenty eleven and I haven't been to a con since. And like it, I, I'm now now I'm just like, no, I like I wanna I wanna go. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, <laughs> let, oh my God. Let's. Uh, are, are you guys good with uh, t- uh, doing some questions from the chat that we've been getting over the past? Sure. Hour? All right. Sure. I certainly am. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, Black Cat uh, two thousand five two thousand three uh, says uh, it's only uh, so this is talking about you know the exhaustion of of pandemic fatigue. It's only exhausting mm-hmm. uh, if you can do something. Uh, but I find uh, it more. Uh, drawing me down uh not being able to do something else uh than taking care of myself um i i i get what you're saying where like because like i was saying i started doing this and it is a this is a hundred percent a distraction and and that's what i created for myself so yeah if, if you're not able to create that distraction then i can understand you know it it being it being a fatigue of not distracting yourself and just always being present in that. Yeah. I mean, I think it is crucial to be able to take care of ourselves and it's it's not nothing, but I certainly can empathize that it can feel like that. It can feel like I'm not getting to progress or do, you know, achieve the things I want, or even just really enjoy certain things in life, Mm -hmm. because this is taking up a lot of space, just as caretaking of self, just as managing on a day to day. And that's really, that's a really tough place to be. That's a place many of us experience on the regular, and it is really difficult. So one of the things I I like to remind myself Mm -hmm. is that Sometimes survive. Sometimes just getting through something is doing something. Yes. yes. I, I yes. mean, it, we. I, I hear a lot of people talking about how I'm only getting through that. I'm like, global pandemic. Yeah. You're getting through it. Yeah. Uh, like yeah. honestly, if if you are social distancing, if you're wearing a mask, if you're taking all of these precautions to not spread or catch this virus, you are absolutely doing something. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and it's that I'm. I hear from I hear from a lot of people that I'm just doing yeah. this. I'm just doing that, and um, that they. The other thing I, I I like to remind myself is that just just because sometimes something sucks doesn't mean I'm not getting through it. I'm not handling it. Basically, even if something is unpleasant, I can still be handling it. Mm-hmm. And some and very often for me that is the case. Um, getting through it and it being unpleasant means I'm still getting through it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think as well, you know, when we kind of talk about doing things and we talk about words like resources, they feel like this big thing, you know, like, oh, I should start a new hobby. Maybe, maybe simply piano, which floods my YouTube field. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> it's like, maybe I should take on something. Yeah. Right. But a resource isn't always about taking on something. Sometimes it's just like I cooked myself a nice thing or I was able to sit in the sun for half an hour with, you know, my coffee in the morning Mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, I got to pet my cat for a little longer today or I got to sit with my kid and read them a story. You are absolutely doing something. Yeah. You are enriching your your own life and your your moments and, and maybe those around you and you're taking care of yourself. And that is a big deal right now. So, and it's always a big deal. It always should be a big deal, actually, because we so easily neglect ourselves. You know, yeah. it's just on the regular. So being able to give it, give yourself that little bit, that's mm-hmm. actually big. 
you were saying uh, about uh, picking up a new hobby or something like that. I, I 100% had that moment during the pandemic. I'm like, I'm going to learn how to draw. And then I started, I went, oh, that's right. I suck. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord, in the chat saying, uh, playing games with friends has been a massive help, especially this yes. last year. Uh, she continues on by saying, um, it's hard as a DM when I need to cancel a game because uh, she gets an extra bit of guilt there. And I, I totally I totally get that um because that that is your kind of hangout now is like instead of going to your friend's house and playing a game or something like that it's through that window and that's the only time you're gonna see you're not gonna go there an hour ahead of time and just hang out and chill with your friends you mm -hmm. meet up on discord you play your game and you leave um i i want to jump in and say something about that oh, yeah. it mm -hmm. was it was um for all of you who are dms out there who are feeling the same way because in a lot of ways people are relying on you um you know you're sort of the hub around which the game revolves but you know i can't drive a car on a broken axle and mm -hmm. so one of the things i discovered is that when i'm dming online games are really hard for me again largely because of my, my i mentioned my autism earlier i've got a lot of sensory sensitivities and it's so difficult for me to have everybody's voice coming through with equal importance mm. through my headphones or through my speakers. A whisper for crosstalk has just as much salience as somebody trying to say something relevant to the game. And for me to simultaneously discern that out while trying to operate my online game, whether it's Fantasy Grounds or Roll20 or you know whatever program I'm using, um, requires so much effort and so much energy, I found myself routinely getting frustrated with my players and that makes it a bad experience for them too. And so I just, I haven't played online as the DM since I realized that about seven months ago. Mm. And I think it's just better for all of us. That's interesting. To, because otherwise they're, they're gonna have a bad experience if I'm there and being frustrated with them. Yeah. And um, with, or you know, May as well they get their own time back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what, uh, at one point, um, it didn't go on very long, but one of the things that uh, a group that I had going at the beginning of the pandemic was if I couldn't make it or anything like that or I needed to cancel, they still met up and played Jackbox, which I know is not D&D &D and is not a role-playing game. <laughs> but it was still like they got to hang out with their friends, and, it, and I felt like that was a, a, a good option. Yeah. Um, Lastly, uh, in this part, Oba Lauren said, uh, I don't have a Switch, but I know so many people that dove into Animal Crossing, and it was so nice to see, uh, it was uh, nice to see the joy that they got from that game. And we could do a whole, I feel like we could do a whole episode talking about Animal Crossing and the pandemic, yeah. because that, sure. that was a oh, yeah. moment. That was like, a, that that was like the, the, the Pokemon Go of 2016, where it's like, everyone was talking about, it. everyone was like, I got cherries, who's got peaches? <laughs> they were just yelling yeah. like i yeah. i i had friends who i never would have expected to play animal cross they got their, their avatars on twitter them in football jerseys they're talking about call of duty and stuff and they're just like yo they're they're selling turnips for so much on my island just come <laughs> get them right now and and so it, it that that was an absolute moment during this um also, Jay did uh, 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 confirm what I said. There was an Animal Crossing grad ceremony, um, and they're, they're not sure how they organized it, but it was small among uh, friends and stuff. Um, so th this, one, this one's actually for Dr. B. Uh, this is uh, uh, Bob Billy G. I'm going to guess that's how it is, underscore 2000. Dr. B, just wondering. I, uh, I am ASD myself. Uh, I have some major uh, sensory issues, mass or torture sometimes. How do you deal with that kind of stuff? Any thoughts or ideas might help? Um, I tried different masks. Uh, thankfully, tact uh, I'm less sensitive about some of that stuff, but um, running in a mask was an interesting challenge. Ooh. Um, because I kept, you know, inhaling it. I'm a big guy. But, I can't um, relate. <laughs> <laughs> there are the, one of the devices that I, I've thought about using uh, if I didn't find masks that sort of naturally cupped anyway was I've seen 3D printed cages mm -hmm. for you to put the mask on, so you can essentially lift them away from your face. 
Um, I've padded my ear, th the straps. So they're less, you know, digging into my ears. There's, some, you know, a couple of personal modifications, but I, I, I really was a trial and error thing for different masks for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I have, I've saw, I've seen ads on Instagram, which is not a great source. Do not go look for those. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're these little, uh, 3d printed molds that just, uh, they're kind of just a wire frame, just kind of like a, a, a scaffolding little thing that you put underneath your mask. They're, they're, they look like a really good idea. Face. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, this, this is in relation to the uh, the disclaimer reading. Oh, well, Lauren comes back and says, yes, uh, get a variety of people to read the disclaimer and have a new one every week. <laughs> There's an idea. No, no. I think Oba Lauren just volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. This is... Um... Uh, oh, man. I'm, I'm probably going to uh, butcher this. Cessation? Uh, uh, this is a uh, pleasant surprise. I was playing Idle Champions. I got this notification for your stream. I'm a clinical psychologist and occupational hygienist from South Africa, so it is really nice uh, to hear another perspective. Nice way to wind down from a work day. Thanks for the uh, great movement. <laughs> yeah. we're we're happy uh, that uh, that uh, we we could we could do this one. I mean, I, I genuinely like really behind the curtain thing when. Dylan was like, hey, we're thinking about doing the show. Do you want to host it? I thought this was one of the most fantastic things I'd ever heard. And I'm so happy that we're here <laughs> doing this. And I get to work with you two amazing people. <laughs> now, if anything should be gift, it's that and me putting my foot up into the webcam. <laughs> uh, let, let me see. Um Oh, uh, this is from uh, uh, Cree3737. Uh, taking care of someone is important work, uh, made no less important by that person being yourself. I like that one. Lovely. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> this is what I get for not completely reading ahead. Pancakes337, uh, who is Lee Goldberg, uh, in the chat <laughs> says, Trevor, I will teach you pancake art at the drop of a hat, my friend. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oba Lord comes back and says, Dr. B, uh, you send me the script. I will read it for you. <laughs> of course, of course. Laura, I, oh I will, God. I will DM it to you later. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Uh, Cassius three three five says, uh, "Since you're wrapping out, uh, shout out to uh, Raphael's Mickey ears." I okay. I just I, I arranged that. The, I didn't realize when I centered my hat mount that <laughs> that was going to happen. Realize what I'm going to I'm going to rearrange the hat. No, please don't. No, please don't. I've been enjoying it. Make it better. Time. Take that. <laughs> take that center one. Put it on your head so it looks like Mickey's got a hat on. <laughs> Oh God! If I could, with with my headphones, my God, I love that hat. Ho oh, ho! We're here to talk about mental health. Ho oh, ho! <laughs> Goofy? Oh, ho ho! Gorsh. Oh. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna make Disney sounds for the rest of uh. <laughs> rest of yeah, we episode. won't get sued. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> Disney's real nice about those things. Um, but uh, let's see. I think that uh, is uh, about all the stuff that uh, Jay grabbed from chat. Uh, do you have any uh, closing thoughts about the pandemic fatigue? No. Well, I was going to give it to. <laughs> oh. first. I'll, I'll do it. I'll yeah, do yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, just really, I would encourage everyone to just be kind to themselves through this, you know, because I feel like we're often. Um, we move between these two states of being super hard on ourselves and then kind of minimizing our experience. And I think just being kind to yourself through this and recognizing that you are doing the best you can in terms of taking care of yourself, do the things that you're being asked to do around wearing a mask, around social distancing, around taking care of those in your life. And, you know, anything after that, you know, anything after the things you have to do, you know, for your daily life and your responsibilities, be kind to yourself through it all. I like that. Dr. B? Um, establish, I, I'm a big fan of establishing routines. Give mm -hmm. yourself something to look forward to. That's what I've been doing throughout all of this. Anything I have to look forward to is one more reason to get through things. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. sorry, setting up rewards for yourself can be helpful as well. So things that you get through, things that you're going to promise yourself to do at the end of the day for yourself, 
you know, I'm going to watch that show I'm looking forward to. I'm going to talk to that friend I'm looking forward to. Like those things really help as well. So it's good. It's good advice. I have nothing to give because I am not uh, skilled in this department. Do not listen to me on these things. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. Uh, lastly, where can uh, people find you if they would like to follow you and hear more about what you do? Uh, well, I have a website. It's metrajordan.com. I have a Twitter handle at metrajordan. So, there you go. yeah. Um, you can always look for stuff uh, that we're putting out at takethis.org. Uh, you can find us on Facebook and and Twitter at takethisorg, uh, and you can find me at the Doctor B, which you can see. <laughs> Right there. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Or you would be able to if I wasn't wearing so white of a shirt. I'll wear a darker. Color <laughs> I, 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 time, I put so like a little bit of a black border around it, but yeah, it's a little hard. <laughs> but yeah, you can find me on the on the socials at V Doctor B. Awesome. Uh, uh, I am Trevor Best. You can find me on Twitter at the Trevor. There's an A hidden in there, and you can see the plethora of things that I'm working on that I'm not going to list out now because we don't have enough time at the end of the show. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think that is going to do it for this week's episode. We hope that you enjoyed it and that you hopefully learned something from it. Uh, Champions of Psychology is meant as an education and entertainment. It is not a substitute for mental advice or professional counseling. Discussion of mental health topics uh, will be primarily rooted in the research and uh, personal experiences and self-disclosures of the host. While we can provide generalized education uh, and possible mental health resources, we cannot offer any recommendations, advice, or options, or sorry, yeah, opinions for any specific persons, cases, or situations. We provide these resources uh, and, oh, I already lost my space. <laughs> we provide these resources and links uh, at our sole discretion, uh, but have not necessarily vetted or reviewed any resources. We assume no liability for the use of information and resources in these sites, and we encourage you to use your best judgment. So until next week, champions out. Bye, everybody. <laughs>